Hello and welcome to Sullivan's Farm. We have a few jobs on the agenda today, uh, a few things to figure out as well. That never goes straight forward, but sure, look, we'll, we'll always roll with it. The first is to try and transition these calves. The other way the camera is going, no, this way. Out um, to the yard first, and then we'll see if we'll be able to get them out into the field after that as well, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna let five out first. Do it by degrees. Rather than letting ten out, we'll see how the five get on with their bucking and lipping. One of them's having to think about it, and the other five are wondering what's going on. Now we have the second lot that took off like bullets. They weren't exactly shy about going out. So. We'll give them a few minutes to run around out here before we do much more with them. And a few of them gone up to see the other Frisians up there too. I took a tape to them all again to, to double check them yesterday evening. Um, I was fairly sure of the first group, but I wasn't so sure of the second group. And then I was just surprised when I saw when I put the tape around their chests, there wasn't much between them at all. They were all over the 40 kgs. And um, we are ready to rock. We'll give them milk for maybe two more evenings. And that'll be that. While they're having their little run around, I can put a bit of lime and straw under the, the two pens inside because there's a kind of a switch in the team happening around here too. The Frisian heifers from the third span down there are moving out here so that easy. The, the ten black Anguses can go off out into the field and come into the, the third span if they want in the evenings or in the nights. There's a bit of running around and acting the Egypt. And two have disappeared up there someplace, so we better go find them. But other than that, it was only the usual kind of old thing. They're only going for a run around, they'll be back. We've 10 back again now, so we'll leave them alone for a few minutes anyway. Try and get ready to, to shift the other ones over to the new pen. We give the Frisian heifers a chance to have a little run around the yard before they go into their new straw bedded, freshly straw bedded accommodation. Get them used to the, the running a little bit too. We've set up the gates here now so the calves, they're in the distance still doing a bit of running around and walking around. Can go back in here to the third span in the evenings or well, should they be getting milk for the next two or three evenings anyway. Um, they go in if it's a bit chillier in the evening, that kind of thing too, so it'll help the transition, hopefully. A bit of a milestone then, the first of the calves are out this year, that lightens the load a little bit inside. As I said, they're not fully waned, but a few more nights or a few more evenings of milk and, and that'll do them. They, they still have the option of going inside and that'll help with herself taking over on Sunday evening. I'm bringing the lads, the young lads and my mother to the hurling match. In Cork on Sunday, uh, herself said she'd feed the calves, so she was over during the week seeing the carry on um, and the messing and the jumping and the carrying and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's good for your skin, apparently. <laughs> sorry. You've got a shower in. No better woman than herself. I trust her completely. Um, I don't have much choice in that matter, but <laughs> she'll be over. And I suppose it's it's just a reminder to me to take more time away from the yard. I'm over and back here twice a day, 365 days a year, at least. Feeding in the morning, feeding in the evening, feeding calves in the morning, feeding cattle in the morning and evening, all that kind of carry on. So I just need to take a little bit of a step back and let herself at it and let the eldest, he's 14, he's well able as well. And it's just a reminder, life is short, so... 
we all have to take a time away from the yard, no matter how much you think you enjoy it anyway. When the calves have finished running around and a few more have got, got a shock off the fence that, I'm going to set up a few white stakes and a reel here because the calves obviously don't need the whole field. Um, but what do needs the whole field or the rest of the field will be the bigger cattle down in the, the near knock at the moment. We're going down to see them in a minute and, and shift the fence and shift them down there. Or maybe shift them. We'll see how much of a residual is left there when we go down. But grass growth slowed down an awful lot in the last week. So it's it's not exactly, it does not, managing an excess of it is not an issue at the moment. What I've been at an hour here and an hour there as well over the past few weeks is a bit of cleaning in here. You can see what it used to be now. The lighting is very good at the moment because we have a kind of an open plan. The snow a couple of years ago knocked in the roof. Um, so I took down a few sheets of that during the week as well. So we can let the dog see the rabbit. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. This one side, piece itself. It was a five unit parlor. It was supposed to be six, but it was a, some kind of a miscommunication between the design and the builder uh, 40 years ago. So it was always and ever a five unit parlour so I'm not going into that again now I, I've spoken about it before I don't know if it'll ever be a milking parlour again but it did need to be cleaned out there was just stuff and dirt built up and accumulated over the past 20 years so that needed to be done if it doesn't become a milking parlour then we'll just fill in the pit and then try and convert it into calf housing or something like that anyway but whatever happens it needed to be cleaned out and I've made a start on it. So when there's something to talk about or something to report on, whether I'm going milking or not, I'll let you know. The homework is still going on around the costs of slurry storage and doing up the parlour, the loan needed to cover that and the repayment capacity. So when there's more to say, we'll say more about. There's a nice cover coming back out here with the cattle. You can see it. This is the first quarter they went into. We divided that one, that's where they were the last day. And we came out here, and now we're here. If they get out of the way, you could see it, but they're very rude. They wouldn't get out of your way. They think they're going to get a move again, but uh, I'll give them a few more hours to think about it and maybe clean off a few more of the bits and pieces. It isn't, it isn't great now. Grass is probably a bit strong on it and, and they're kind of making a face at it but as I said we'll give them a few more hours to think about it and um, we'll see if they have a different attitude then. I'm just going to set up a temporary roadway here before they come out and they're going to go into the far off side of the knock then in a couple of hours. The temporary roadway is set up. The plan would be that this would be a permanent roadway with stakes and wire along there to give access to the far off side of the far off knock, um, which sounds like it's in, in, you know, miles and miles away, but it's actually only about 300 yards from the, the main yard here, the yard at the road. And say so that would be the, the roadway out to the far off side. And then you come around here and the yard is actually just there. And there would be a roadway from here then we take down this gate and a roadway back to the gap in the distance there so that would make it easy then to access the near knock the couple of paddocks there and then i think we'll break the far off knock into four paddocks this is the grass i was showing you the last day this is the first mm -hmm. paddock in the near knock and there's a nice cover coming on it this is the one that got pig slurry there um whenever that was back at the start the march around then anyway um and grass jumped out of the ground then and it's jumping out of the ground now for what will be the third grazing of the year on it whenever they're back in here again so i'd say at this stage pig slurry works or it works for me anyway if we can get it out early at that time of the year just settling up the water truck for them here now before they come over and there's not huge cover on it, I'm calling it about 1100 of a grass cover, but 
it'll do for now. And there's a few of those here out here as well. We used to call them rushes, but apparently they're uh, ecological diversity features, something like that now. <clears throat> They seem happy enough with the move, so far anyway. They're grazing a bit. Heads down, isn't that what they say? Now, yeah, I like the calves above. They're going to be cracked out here as well. But they'll be happy enough. There'll be no fear of them for a few days anyway. Two things I guess I noticed just there walking over now and even just shifting them out here. First, that last heifer to come out, yearling heifer. I know her number and I checked it there uh, whenever it was. I was checking weights or doing dates or something anyway there earlier in the week. Um, a whitehead heifer, she cost 50 euro at the mart. I thought, geez, I can't leave her after me for that kind of money. I should have definitely left her after me because I don't know if she'd even pay for herself. She was sick as a calf here. I had to get stuff from the vets for her. She just never thrived. And she's all right now. She's not going to die. But equally, she'll be another one that when she goes out the gate, she might have left a tenner after her um, when it's all added up. But I should have left her after, after me that day last year. Second thing, that's their first grazing out in the Farutnock. Um, and they're after getting two grazings already in the near knock. The main difference between the two is that there was rape set on the near knock and it was reseeded a couple of years ago. It cost money. It does the cattle well when they're out in it on the fodder rape. Cost money to reseed it and, and that kind of thing too and, and get the fed in, fence and set up in the paddock scene. But there's a hell of a lot of a return out of it when you're getting extra grazings every year. When, when the job is done right now. I'm not one of those fellows who, who kind of squeezes the thing and pushes it to the limit or atting of the sort. But equally, you have to give yourself a chance and, and do the thing some way right. Spend the money where you're going to get the return. And I guess it's, it's just dawned on me here now. The proof of the pudding is, is in the grazing uh, to, to, to butcher that phrase. And it's, it's, it's worked out well. I'm looking out at it here now. Reseeding the near knock has worked out well. And we'll probably do something similar here in the far out knock in the not too distant future as well. That's it for this video then. Thanks a million for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Good luck.